In this video, I'm going to show you how I get the best video setting with the Sony ZV-E1 and also some other tips and tricks to make, uh, you know, this little machine a lot better. All right, so the first thing I like to do when I have my camera in the hand is to turn it on. <laughs> and <laughs> it was a bad joke. And then I press FN and we go here all the way to this shooting mode and we switch shooting mode from intellect, which is in the beginning when you open up the camera first time, to manual. Personally, I like to have full control of the settings when I'm out filming. And then obviously when we're setting up the camera for video, make sure that you're in uh, video mode right here then we're gonna press the menu button and the first thing that we are gonna do is to go scroll down to the red one here the shooting section and we are gonna change the file format when you click that you have a lot of things to choose from i usually use the xavc s 4k that's your standard you know h264 codec and i mean it's pretty light on the memory card and it's pretty decent 4k quality too now in some scenarios i want to get a little bit better video quality and then i would use the xavc si4k codec but the drawbacks here is the, the files are a lot bigger, so you will need like more space on your memory card. And you will also need faster memory cards, which tend to be a little bit more expensive. So here you have to do a little choice on your own, you know. Yes, you have to think a little bit yourself. But usually I just use the S one here and then I click OK. Then we go to movie settings and we choose the frame rate. And uh, for this, we will work with the standard, you know, 25 FPS. If you are in the United States or the other, you know, NTC areas, you can choose 24 here or 30 FPS. But you might be thinking now, what about slow motion? I have a little trick for slow motion, which we make it, you know, bind it so we don't have to switch here all the time. Very nice. We do that later. So first we have 25 FPS right here. Then in the record settings, I like to do the highest quality, which is 140M422 10 bit. I recommend you choose a two, but if you can, if you want to have like simpler files that are easier on your computer, then feel free to experiment with the lower quality of versions. But 10 bit is for me, because I like it. Click it. All right. Next, go down to audio recording right here, and we're gonna press the audio record level. I think like by default, it's somewhere like 27 or something like that. It's pretty high, we don't want that. So take it down to, I don't know, sweet spot is like 12 or 14 or something like that. It's obviously gonna depend a little bit on what type of microphone that you're using, but I think like by default, it's nice to have it a little bit lower so you're not clipping your sound. And then I click OK right here. All right, so while editing this, I realized that I forgot to mention one thing that I like use a whole lot, that's grid lines. And basically, if you go in the menu section, and on the you know first tab the shooting tab scroll all the way down to number 10 you see shooting display then there you see you know grid line display and toggle that on and below that you can see grid line like the type of line and i use you know the rule of third grid but you can experiment if you want to you know Next up, navigate to the exposure color tab and we find white balance, find that. And I personally like to set my white balance manually because it changes so much throughout what type of scene that you're in. And usually I just, you know, go to the white balance, scroll down here to the uh, C-Temp filter and I set it on 5,500, which is like normal daylight hour. Then I change it according to what scene I'm finding in. But if you do find that intimidating for some reason, then, you know, feel free to play around with the daylight, shade or the cloudy like presets depending on what situation you're finding or simply use auto white bullets who cares do whatever you want but personally i set mine to this one here click it next up is picture profile and this is where a lot of fun is and if you navigate to color tone here we can go to picture profile and i tend to use two types of picture profiles very simple and i'll show you like in what type of scenario each one is so for picture one picture profile one here i've changed it the gamma to s cinetone all right and then the color mode, I'll change that also to S Cinetone as well. And then if you go down to detail, I've like changed mine to minus three. This is always like a big uh, like discussion within the you know Sony community. Have the detail in zero or minus you know seven or whatever. Basically, if you want to, you can have a little bit less detail because it's so easy to reintroduce the sharpness in post. You understand what I'm saying? So if you want to get a little bit softer look, which is pretty nice, and you don't get the digital sharpening that the camera sometimes produces, then you can do that. So I like you know minus three. And then the other picture profile I also use, and then we go again here and we go picture profile two, and that is S log three. So in the gamma, S log three, and in the color mode we simply choose S gamma three cine. All right, and then detail, again, I have this set to minus three. 
And the difference between these two pixel profiles is that S-Log is really flat. And in theory, it should retain more dynamic range, but you will really need to color grade that because <laughs> there is, ain't no colors in it, you know. It's like really, really flat picture profile. But the S-Cinetone, it just grades straight out of the camera. And depending on what I'm shooting or if I just need a quick turnaround and don't want to be asked to, you know, color grade my footage, then S-Cinetone is what I choose. Now, once that is finished, we now get to the focus section and we have, we can start with, you know, autofocus and manual focus. I like to have my, you know, I'll focus on continuous autofocus. And then the transition speed, I think it's like in seven by default. I like to take it down to like four or three, somewhere around that range, because then it's not like as, um, like it doesn't, it, it's not changing focus as fast and it's not much more natural and looks way better. So that's where I would have it. You can keep it on four. And then what's more, the focus area, I like to have it on zone for my running gun situations. When you're shooting, if you press this middle button right here, you can change, you know, where the focus is. All right. But a cool thing is too, that with the ZV-E1, that if you press the screen like this, you can actually put the focus like on a focus tracking. So if you have a specific subject that you need to, you know, film or whatever, then you can just press the screen and now the camera is... Uh, like locked on that subject. And the autofocus on this device is just simply incredible, like <laughs> top of the line. Another little thing we can do here is the peaking display and you can have it on. This is like a little bit uh, like a preference if you want to see the focus peaking or not. I don't always want to do it, so I have a little trick uh, that I can quickly switch it on and off that I'll show you in a second. Now the drawback with the ZV-E1 is that it's so small that you don't have a lot of buttons to bind and you really have to make best of whatever that you have. So for the slow motion on this one, I like to use the S and Q. So what I do here, if you go to S and Q, I like to play, put it on manual exposure and then we go to menu and you navigate to the shooting tab and we go in image quality, S and Q settings and the frame rate settings. I have the record frame rate to 25 FPS and the frame rates to 50 FPS. Basically what this means is that now right off the camera, I'll get a slow motion footage. And once they make the update to 100 FPS or like 120 for America, then I'll definitely use that on the S and Q to get the maximum amount of slow motion. But now, whenever I switch to the, from, you know, the image video tab to the S and Q tab and start to record, it's automatically recording in slow motion. So I can quickly just switch to, ah, now I want to film slow motion, quickly switch to it and vroom, <laughs> this is how I shoot, you know, vroom, vroom, <laughs> do the little pan. I'm definitely alone in the studio today. And then for the record setting, I like to use the 140M 422 10-bit footage. Now to get the most of my camera, I've binded a few buttons here that I personally like, and I'm gonna show you what I've done. So in the menu settings, uh, navigate to the toolbox that like on the like <laughs> furthest down. Do you say that furthest down? You understand what I'm saying? The yellow tab here, and we find dial customize, and we go to the video dial, and we press it here. And if we go all the way up like this in the rear, I've changed a few settings here. So the first one I wanted to change was the number two. It's set to product showcase by default. I never use that. So I changed that to gamma display assist. And basically what that is, when you're shooting in like S-Log, it's super flat and you, you see everything great. But by pressing this button right now, I get a little, you know, gamma display assist, which shows me how it would look like if it was just like color graded to standard, you know, rec 709 colors. And that I think is a really helpful thing. So you're not looking at a super gray image here, but you're actually looking at something like how it might look once you've, you know, added some colors and contrast to it. Next button I've changed is the peaking display select. So the four, can't remember what it was doing, but nothing that I've used. You just press it and then you just navigate to the peaking display select. And basically now whenever I want to have the focus peaking on, I just press this button right here and I can have the you know, focus peaking on and they get them off. And yeah, another thing about focus peaking that I think is nice that if you navigate to the focus peaking again, then in the peaking, I would set the peaking color to red. It's the most like uh, distinguishable, is that good English? It's the color that you notice the most, and then you can have the peaking level to mid or high, depending on how, you know, extreme you want it to be. And the final button that I've changed is the last one right here, number six, and I've changed it to AFMF selector toggle. So basically, 
this allows me to quickly toggle between manual focus and, and autofocus. Because I don't know about you, but when I'm filming like the most cinematic things that I want to film, then I want to do it in manual focus. So the autofocus isn't, you know, potentially jumping somewhere else, you know? And I know that a lot of lenses do have a button here where we can switch the back and forth, but I think it's just much easier and more quickly done to be do able to do it on the camera itself. Plus some lenses don't have this little button right here. All right, so it's future me again here, and now I've been playing around with all of these bindings for quite some time, and I just want to let you know that I'm not 100% sure yet if I actually do like, you know, having this button right here, bind the two, toggle it between manual focus and autofocus. The reason is that I've noticed that I sometimes, you know, accidentally click it, and when I think I'm, you know, filming everything autofocus, I'm filming in manual focus, and that is a disaster. However, I do like having this option, and on my a7 IV, I actually have it binded up here, so I never accidentally click it. And yeah, you can uh, kind of, you know, uh, decide on your own if you want to try this out or not. Now you know how to, you know, figure out how to bind everything, you know? And another cool thing you can also experiment with is monitor brightness. So in the toolbox right here, go down to number seven, monitor and monitor brightness, and you can change that to uh, like sunny weather for it to be really, really bright. This here now consumes obviously more battery, and I'm not sure if it also makes everything like warmer. I can't, I'm not sure. But I often have this on, but sometimes not. It's totally depending what you want, you know. And that's, my friend, how I set up the ZV-E1.